What's up guys, Victor here, coming back at you with another Tackle Tuesday. And in this week's video, we're talking all about the Stinger Rig and we're talking all about wire rigs and different ways to make them and the applications you guys should be using them for. So now when I say wire rigs, I'm talking about single strand wire rigs and I'm generally speaking about targeting king mackerel or kingfish. Now, down here in Southeast Florida and, and in other parts of Florida, springtime and summertime is when we get our really big mackerel, king mackerel runs. So this video is really gonna help you guys out. If you don't know how to tie your own stinger rigs, don't know how to make a kingfish rig, I'm gonna show you exactly how to make them. I'm gonna show you multiple ways to make them and various ways to fish them. So you do not wanna miss this one. All right, now I am gonna be talking mainly about kingfish and king mackerel. But keep in mind that the rigs that I'm going to show you guys how to make and the different types I'm going to make for you, they don't just have to be used for kingfish, you know? They can be, be used for barracudas, wahoo, anything with teeth and anything that you're going to be live baiting with these rigs will work for. Also towards the end of the video, I'm going to show you guys how I store my kingfish rigs, my stinger rigs, and why it's important to store them, why it's important to make them ahead of time, and how this right here can, be, can make or break your success offshore. All right, the first rig I'm gonna show you guys how to make is a single hook rig. Now you're gonna to wanna to fish a single hook rig with a smaller bait such as a pilchard or a live sardine or even a really small goggle eye. And I like to fish number five, American Fishing Wire which is this stuff right here. I'm not affiliated with this company. This is just the brand of wire I've been using for years. It's treated me well and I really like it. So number five for that single hook rig. And I'm gonna show you guys a little cool thing that I like to do. So I always used to be confused about how long to make the length of my wire. But if you notice what I can do right here is, I'll take my little side snips and I will just pick one spot in the leader wire coil to cut. And I will just keep cutting and cutting and cutting until I have a bunch of single strands of wire left. So cut there, cut there. Okay, so you see now there's no confusion. Now I have, well for the most part, except those two leading strands, now I have uniformly length strands of wire. And this is my number five wire. And so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna take one of these right here and I'd say it's probably right around 18 inches long, maybe 20 inches long. And I like to use uh, thin wire live bait hooks. This is a Mustad 3.0. And for single hook rigs with pilchards or like I said, sardines, smaller baits, baits in this size range or smaller, I like a 3.0 or 4.0 sized hook. Just a single hook, no stinger rig is required. And now, for all of the rigs I'm about to show you guys, you are gonna need to, you are need, you're gonna need to know how to tie a haywire twist. I'm not gonna show you in this video, but if you are unsure of how to tie a haywire twist, I have done a video and it will be in the description box below. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my haywire twist real fast. Okay, so my haywire is done on the hook and that's all it is, is just that portion. And now, this is where you guys can customize and you can decide whether to use a swivel or not. I like swivels and I like really small swivels. This is a Spro Power Swivel. The link will be in the description box below. And the reason I like these is Kingfish, although they, they don't mind eating this leader a lot of the time, sometimes they do shy away from it. They can be a little veered away from big swivels. So I used, like to use the smallest swivel possible that still offers enough breaking strength to where it's not gonna break. So this is like a 65 pound swivel, but they compact it into a really small shape. And this is a Spro Power Swivel. And so I'm gonna do the exact same thing, which is my haywire twist at my swivel end. Okay, now I have the two ends of my number five strand and that's all my single hook rig is, is just this, is just this little 3-0 or 4-0 live bait hook. And now the reason I said that you can, you don't have to use a swivel is because you can do an Albright knot. Now I don't have an Albright knot in, on my channel, but Albright knots are something you can definitely tie. It's a way to tie wire to mono or fluorocarbon. But the reason I don't do it is because as you guys saw with all my pool noodles, back in that uh, previous clip is I like to have all my rigs pre-made that way I can just tie a simple knot ready to go when I get cut off and I need to put on a leader, new leader because an Albright knot is a little bit more time consuming than just tying a uni knot to the swivel. So now the next rig I'm going to show you how to make a double hook rig, a stinger rig. Now this can be used when flatlining, this can be used on a trolley rig if you're at the pier, this can be uh, used on a kite 
It has a lot of different applications, and I'm going to do the exact same thing I started with last last time. Now for my my stinger rig, I'm generally going to be fishing a bigger bait, so probably a goggle eye, blue runner, a big cigar minnow, a really big sardine, something like that. And you know, you don't want to go less than a 4-0 hook or really more than a 6-0 sized hook. And I like these thin wire hooks because you're not putting a lot of drag on fish when you're fishing wire generally anyway. So I like a nice thin wire hook. It's a nice smaller, thinner profile hook. It penetrates the mouth easier. And that thicker wire gauged hook is just not needed because these hooks just don't straighten. Because when you're live baiting with wire and you're fishing for things like kingfish, they generally have soft mouths and you, you can't put a lot of drag on these fish because the hook will rip out. So there's that. I got one end done. I'm gonna do the swivel portion real quick. And like I said, if you do want to opt out and do that Albright knot, you can do the Albright knot, which is the connection between your wire and either your mono or fluorocarbon leader. Okay, now notice that I used a single hook for my leading hook in my stinger rig and also a single hook as my only hook in my single hook rig. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of treble hooks, and I'll tell you why. I have had way too many instances offshore on the pier and in different areas where treble hooks generally increase your, your hook rate, but they also increase the amount of times you will foul hook a fish. You have these three little prongs, and what it is is this is probably only a size one or size 10 hook on each prong. So when you do hook a fish, you're not really grabbing the meat of the fish with that much because this these hooks are so small I'd rather take the chance and fish another single hook as my stinger hook But rather than this because nine times out of ten you're not gonna foul hook them with the stick with the single hook uh, Stinger rig as opposed to the treble hook stinger rig and you're just that much more confident when fighting your fish and When it comes to gaffing at everything. I like to do double stingers for my for my stinger hooks, stinger hooks. I do not like to fish trips that often. And also I know that in the, uh, I made a video with the big baits for big offshore fish and I did fish treble hooks, but you know, I'm always changing my mind. That's what being a fisherman is. It's always, you know, adapting and learning from your mistakes. And I would much rather just fish single hooks as my trailer hooks from now on. So now I just took another long piece of wire and this is gonna be my trailer hook right here. Just made a haywire twist. Okay, so now here's the tricky part. Now is where you need to keep in mind the bait that you're fishing and customization. So here is my leading hook with my rig right there. Now here is my trailer hook. My trailer hook has to match the bait that I'm fishing. So if I'm fishing a kite bait, so I'm fishing a bait that's on top and frantic, I like to put my leading hook and my stinger hook behind the head and not in the nose of the fish. So my, so my stinger rig is not gonna be that long. If I'm fishing a really big bait, I'm gonna want a really long trailer because you want your hook spaced out to where there's a nice proportion of the meat, of uh, hook and meat, and where the fish could possibly attack your bait. You don't want your hooks, you know, that close together and have a bait this big. So this is where you guys gotta use your judgment and really, you know, analyze the bait that you're fishing and make your stinger hooks and your the, the length of your trailer of your wire according to that. So I fish a lot of gogs, and so if I take my leading hook right here, and I picture the nose of the gog right here, and I'm gonna come back, I want it to be about in the middle of the gog when I put my second hook in them. So I'm just gonna cut it right here, pleat my stinger rig, I just gotta do one more haywire twist. So now this is the leading hook of my main portion of my wire, and now this is the stinger portion of my wire. Now I'm gonna take the stinger portion of my wire, go through the eye of my leading hook, the hook that's on the main portion of my wire, and I'm just gonna do another haywire twist. So there you have it. That is what a stinger rig looks like. Now if you wanna use trebs, you have a lot of luck with them, be my guest. You guys can do two trebs, you can do a single hook, you could do a treb as your leading hook and a single hook as your back hook. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. Fish aren't gonna choose to decide whether they wanna eat your bait or not based on what kind of hooks are on there. That is entirely up to you to give you guys more confidence and for you to decide what you have the best results on. I personally like two single hooks. I have been catching a lot of fish offshore on the two single hooks. They work, they catch fish, and it raises my confidence. And at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. 
So now there's two rigs that I showed you guys how to make. You have a single hook rig, you have a double hook rig. Now, you can also go ahead and make a triple hook rig. So if I want to fish a bullet bonita or a tinker mackerel or a mackerel or a big blue runner, I can simply go ahead and just add another hook to this hook right here. So now in essence, I have a triple hook rig. So stinger rigs are real easy as long as you know how to do a haywire twist, what type of wire to use, what hooks to use. Hooks gotta match the size of your bait. You wanna use small swivels and wire also you wanna match the size of your bait. So I showed you guys number five wire. Number five wire is a good all around wire. But if I know that there's been a lot of big kings, a lot of big wahoo in the area, and I'm gonna be fishing a bigger bait like a bonita or a really big gog on a downrigger or something big where I think I'm gonna get a 30 plus pound fish, I like to beef it up to number six wire. I generally like to fish number six wire on the kite as well because when you're, when you're kite fishing, your bait is frantic on top and the fish can't see the wire half the time. All right, now that we made the rigs, now that I showed you guys how to hook the baits, let's talk a little bit about storing these rigs and why you should pre-make them. As you see here, I just have a simple pool noodle, pool noodle that I got for a dollar. Just cut it into a bunch of pieces, and I have a bunch of rigs, single hook rigs, double hook rigs on here. Now the reason I stress this is because when you're offshore, and sorry to say, but when shit hits the fan, so when rods are just going off, going off, going off, you might have five hits in a row, you might have two out of those five fish landed because things are inevitable. You might get one fish shark, you might get one fish cut off, you might get one fish where the bait just rips off the hook. You need to have as many rigs possibly made as possible. Wire is also something that kinks. It is not like mono where, um, you know, if you catch a fish on it, it's still generally going to stay straight. Wire will kink and it'll squiggle up and it's just no bueno when you want to put another bait on that rig. So you want to have as many rigs as possible made when you're going offshore or generally any type of fishing. You want to, preparation is key. You guys got to prepare to get lucky. You know, going offshore and getting lucky is one thing, but if the fish are biting and you don't have enough rigs made and you don't have enough rods rigged, you are really diminishing the amount of things you can put in the boat and the amount of fish you can catch if you're not ready. So like I said, Wire kinks, you want to have your rigs ready, you want to have as many rods rigged as possible when you're going offshore. And that's why I like to just put them on here, I just simply wrap them on there, the wire doesn't kink because I just make the loops big enough to where it doesn't kink, and just wrap them on here. And that way when your rod gets cut or your wire gets kinked, you simply just grab a rig off here. And that's another reason why I put that swivel on there and I don't do those Albright knots because it's a simple one-two uni knot and I got a bait right back out in the water and it saves a hell of a lot of time. All right guys, that is a wrap. I hope you guys learned something. Hopefully I helped you out. Hopefully this stupid little 99 cent pool noodle kind of really opened up some eyes and maybe you were having trouble finding out how to store these rigs. Maybe that's why you didn't make them, but now that you guys know this, I really recommend doing this, especially if you're trying to get into the offshore game. I've been trying to step my game up. You guys have seen a lot of offshore videos and you're going to see, keep seeing them in the next coming months because that is one thing growing up, you know, I learned how to fish the pier, I did the shark fishing thing off the beach and I still like to do all that. But one thing I really want to learn and get better at is the offshore game. So if you guys want to come along with me, I'm going to keep teaching you guys what I observe that way, you know, my mistakes don't become your mistakes and we can learn together because that's what this whole thing is about. That's what life is about, guys, and that is what fishing is about. Growing, getting better. So if you like the video, please make sure to like the video and leave a comment below and I'll be seeing all you guys, my land sharks, in that next video. So stay salty, my friends. Later.